David from Kingwood has a question about floor insulation. And that's just one of his questions. He's got a lot of projects. David writes, I'm working on a block and pier home and need mm -hmm. your help, Tom. Okay. He wants to know, can I pour a self-leveling compound on the floor before setting ceramic tile, or do I need the quarter-inch backer board? And his other question is, should the floor be insulated? First off, backer board's an easier way to go and a better way to go. You put it down, it stays in place, uh, because what you're doing is you're laying the backer board in a quarter-inch uh, thick layer of thin set, and then you're screwing it or nailing it down to the subfloor so it all holds together, but yet uh, separates the movement. And then, of course, with the thin set on top and the tile, you're going to have a really good solid floor, and that's the best way to go. Self-leveling compounds are for a different situation where you have to level a floor because it's out of whack. You mm -hmm. put on concrete and put on wood, whatever the case may be. It works better, by the way, on concrete floors, and that's what it's designed for. As far as insulating underneath, code requirements today say you're supposed to. Uh, if it was my house and I was building a pier and beam, I, in this part of the country, and I built a lot of them, and I could get away with it, <laughs> which I tend to get away with a lot of things. <laughs> a couple could provide those. I had to put a little right. there, but... I would not insulate under my floor if it was... Let it breathe. I'd let it breathe. I would put up with the very few cold days we have in the winter mm -hmm. and kind of enjoy it as kind of a fun time and with slippers and a robe and chili in a fireplace. Or just a pair of socks. I got big, thick socks, yeah, too. Yeah, me too. Like Go to Duluth Trading. They got yeah. the big, thick ones. I got an REI. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> anyway, that's how I would handle it because the house would, would last longer. It would be healthier. It would breathe better. And there's no heat gain from the floor. It's always going to be the walls in the attic. And you handle that differently with radiant barriers, insulation, good windows, mm -hmm. attic ventilation, so on. But underneath there, I'd leave it open. But if you want to insulate uh, formaldehyde-free fiberglass, an R19 is standard underneath the floor here in this part of the country. But you don't recommend doing it. I wouldn't do it for me, okay. no. But if sometimes they make you. You know those people? They it trickles from Washington down to our city governments. <laughs> Not for long. Okay. okay. I don't know if they're getting rid of this one, Charlie, but anyway. <laughs> we'll see. The, your, the city municipalities will tell you sometimes you have to meet an energy code when you build a home. Right. I don't think they're repealing it anytime too. I, no. soon. I don't think it's a big... Not in time for this project. I don't think it's really high on the list for, for a lot yeah. going on. But uh, So if you have to do it, you have to do it. Do it well. Formaldehyde-free fiberglass, 19. Got it? Done. Moving on. You looking for Down more questions? Down the road. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. Looking for more questions and answers, you'll find them at homeshowradio.com under the Ask Tom section.